laugh anymore. What's up guys, it's me again, Kitty, and I'm back with a brand new Top 10 video. Heroes and heroines are nice, but villains are better. I have waited a long time for this video because villains mean to me almost as much as the main characters of the game. I don't mind if they're evil and all, I just love badasses. So here are my top 10 favorite rascals from Final Fantasy. Enjoy! Lose Lhasa and we lose the Empire. Here I will pay my debt. I swear it now. Though King Ramanas and Lady Ash be gone, they stand ever at the side of their people. Except for that twang in his voice, Vane's pretty confident. He doesn't care if people like him or not, he stays unimpressed of the hatred against him and quickly gives him glorious speech here and there. He probably is one of the most intelligent villains of all time. His military and strategical skills make him a real problem to our Sky Pirates. Or perchance a saint of salvation. Since I've seen Spoonie's review on Final Fantasy, I permanently gotta think about Hagen Christensen acting the role of Cypher Elmacy. However, he's full of himself, as I believe. Actually, he's not really bad. Cypher is more of a shady person. Usually, he's accompanied by these fisherman freaks Fujin and Rajin. But, armed with that awesome gunblade, he easily gets by on his own. A cold shiver runs down my back every time I see this dubious blue-haired lord. Even after he's already dead, you just don't get rid of him. Taking a soul, you have to fight him four fucking times, and each time he comes up with a new getup. The intrigues bubble inside his nasty guado brain, he indirectly forces Yuna to marry him, tries from the year one to blast Titus and his companions, and simply wants to become Sin with Yuna's help because he believes that having saved Spira through erasing it along with the inhabitants. I'd rather avoid this guy and his frightening Aya Nanima. Why don't you leave, Jill? Or rather, take your leave. Humans have no business here. What? Your eminence! <laughs> what? <Good> magic? <laughs> Bartendulas, aka Primark Jellant Dicely, aka Orphan. The many faces remind me of the Genus head. Personally, I liked him best acting as the fake Pope, because as soon as he changes into his other form, which is a huge tiling scaffold with opera singing flat faces at the flanks, the group's got nothing to laugh about anymore. You have to battle him three times, whereas I perceive the second one as the hardest, because you don't really count with a bus after that empty wasteland of Orba. Also, this evil scoundrel wishes no less than destroying Cocoon, and for the simple reason that he's too lazy to do the dirty job, he works out a plan to make the Lassie doing this. Too bad that Lightning forwarded his plans as she kills off that entanglement made of grinning fart faces, fans, and a giant hand, united with her friends finally. Will be torn asunder. <laughs> so if I did that, destroyed Orphan. <laughs> Your focus will be fulfilled. We have neither dreams nor honor. And you? And here we have a miserable existence who desires arts, but got no employment at the theater and therefore became megalomaniac. <laughs> so that was the story plot of Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Okay, just kidding. There is one thing that wasn't a joke though. He always carries a small red book with him, which tells the story of the drama Loveless and comments on different situations with quotes off and on, like he's provoking some kind of poetry slam or so. 
Regrettably, Zack and his friends are less talented concerning the poetizing and rather finish him off by sword. In close combat, he's no good, actually. He may be mutating to a half-god at the end, but gets turned down by Minerva then and is killed by Zack without any problems. Yet Genesis is part of a legendary trio, along with Angeal and Sephiroth, and represents to me a tragic but weak opponent. Even if the morrow is barren of promises, nothing shall forestall my return. No, Kafka's not a number one. Why not? Because he's a freaking cheap copy of the Joker. I'm not kidding ya. A lot has been copied from Final Fantasy, but Square Enix learned Kefka by watching DC, that's for sure. A man who's abysmally bad, so that it's almost funny again. There is no doubt that this dude is the most wicked rascal by a long shot. Cause if you gladly spend your time with poisoning streams, obliterating the espers, and bringing chaos and destruction over the world, then there must be something wrong with you. How did you guys feel about this? You know, after all of his freaky appearances, I stirred up so much hatred against this clown that I awaited an epic ending battle where I get the chance to punch this motherfucker. I'm not exaggerating, but I finished him off within 10 minutes. Hassle free. Which took me by surprise. Well, uh, perhaps he's not the horror of the world at all, but only someone who broke out of the circus. I'm not exactly aware of Kane belonging to those who simply can't resist the merits of the dark side or has just been manipulated by Goldman. Anyway, for quite a long time he opposes Cecil and steals the full crystals at the behest of Goldbess in order to, who would have thought it, destroy the world. Once he's being good, you have a jumping Dragoon Knight with a lance at your side but if Kane strikes at the bad side yet again, our nerf-jangling battles, disappointments, and kidnapping high on the agenda. So, you did survive. He possibly never excused Cecil for getting the girl instead of him, I suppose. Jet, you have to love this guy. Even if Titus is doing well being a blitzball player, he doesn't reach the master. His blitzball icon of a father is smug, funny, and takes pleasure in teasing his sonny. He's not much of a villain either. After all, he sacrifices himself for Lord Braska. Fine. Make me the faith. I've been doing some thinking. Who would know that you're going to become Sin right on? Even after Jack loses his hat during the ultimate battle, he doesn't forfeit any of his coolness. It stays unforgettable how he changes into a mighty ape-like Gigas with a sword within his chest while a signature metal theme plays back in the rear. The living don't need a god, but the dead do. God to protect them, a god of salvation. Liam O'Brien, who is also the voice of Kane Highwind, is the main reason there why I'm all one. gaga of the Lord of the Shadows. Kill me. I never got the story between him, Noel and Yule, and why he's so damn keen on destroying the world again to save her. He's some egomaniac. Whatever. His most recognizable trademarks are his sophisticated language and the mega sword. Thank God which you can receive in lightning returns. In his lasting fight against Etro's warriors, he increasingly gets despaired, kills Sarah in the meantime, and gets washed ashore the coast of the timeless Valhalla. And I have to say, I didn't have the heart to send him to the beyond by all what had happened. Give it up. Won't do it. Although Kaios goes there all by himself later on in any case, so from that point of view, it doesn't really matter.
their targets. How should it be any different? Of course it's our one-winged angel on rank 1. It's almost boring if you can already claim the end of every top 10. But I can't help it, Sephiroth is basically the coolest villain. Good to see you, Cloud. Many baddies have a dramatic background story, or being manipulated, or in real not that bad. But Sephiroth has been torn down into deep hatred by his despair over his pretended origin, and he knows no mercy. Cold and brutally accounting, he preps everything to summon Meteor to, you have three guesses, destroy the world so that he can gain the rule over an unsullied planet. His weapon is that simple and still became iconic, with the amazing long mezzanine he slashes anything that gets in his way. Likewise, there is only one man that can top my beloved Liam O'Brien, and that's George Newbern. The deepness and the infamous tone in his voice are cut out for a villain. <laughs> Come and try. Like a phoenix from the ashes, he appears from time to time despite several deaths and makes life awkward for Cloud. I'm sorry to say that this poor guy will never be able to cast him off because Sephiroth, according to his own quote, will never be a memory, but will always recur. For now. And we as the community hope so as well, don't we? <laughs> Never be a memory.